Hi, this is Michelle Peremsky. And I'm Pastor Ron Wee. And you're listening to 180 Your Life, the grief empowerment podcast that pairs health and wellness with the grief journey. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so we're in part three of Hope for the Holidays. And as I said, if, if you're just joining us, um, I was amazed. I don't even know how to articulate this. You know, my, my father passed um, two days before Thanksgiving. And he passed away in his sleep. It was a surprise to me when I went to go get him in the morning. And, um, and I really, I've chosen to be transparent. I'm only six days out from losing my dad, which I'm, I absolutely am crazy about my father. Um, I, I really love my dad a lot. Of course, I really love my mother. She has gone on to heaven as well um, years ago. But my father was very much, um, he lived in my house. He was very much a, a, a second father figure to my children after my husband's passing. So um, I would just want to share with you different things that I've learned you know, em employing these grief principles that we talk about in 180 Your Life and how it even opened up the grief journey even further than I had seen before. Absolutely. And when you're dealing with grief, it's almost like dealing with an undertow. Mm-hmm. And Like can, in the ocean. Yeah, in the ocean. Right. Yeah, you can be washed out to sea, right. but there are certain things you can do to survive it, to actually learn something from it, even thrive from it. Right. And, uh, and surf that wave back to you, shore. You've got to surf it back. <laughs> uh, it's, it's not very pleasant while it's happening. No, but it's rough. There's, there's something that you can do to manage it. And some of the things that you've been doing, uh, we talked about in the previous uh, podcast, that you didn't isolate. I think that's really important to have connection. Mm -hmm. And so you were connecting with people that understood, that were knowledgeable, that cared about you, which is great. Uh, you set real good limits and boundaries. You created safe spaces for yourself and for your children mm -hmm. because your kids need to grieve, and they don't grieve like adults. That's right. Yeah, kids have their own rhythm, and you are establishing yours. And in establishing yours, they took their cues. Right. You know, kids can only grieve in bursts. Right. So they grieve for about 30 to 40 minutes, and then they need to play. And then when they're ready again, they'll grieve again. Um, as adults, I remember when my husband passed, I was crying like 10 hours a day. You know, right. that was just like my job for a little while. And and w and this has been a different process, uh, asking my children right off the bat, what do you need? What Instead of sh pushing them outside, go play outside right. with somebody to watch them, bringing them into the process, and that has been a life-changing. It actually helps to give so much energy and life and hope. And of course, we have the hope and the knowledge that my dad is with God. So, you know, our family rests in that, but there is still an absence of body to deal with, you know? A, a huge loss. Mm -hmm. uh, he was such a heroic kind of figure to go through what he went through in World War II as a concentration camp survivor yes. and to survive that long and to be a better, kind person uh, in spite of all the things that had happened. I know. He was a network news cameraman. He traveled on Air Force One. He knew four presidents. He worked with Barbara Walters, David Brinkley. He was considered the top cameraman, cameraman, one of the top cameramen in the country when he was at NBC. He was well-known and well-loved. And, on t and I'm, of course, I'm bragging on my dad. But then he also was an amazing father who had a wonderful instinct about just being an incredible parent and grandparent to my children. Incredibly kind. Incredibly kind and not pretentious and just an, an incredible an incredible man. So yes. here's here are the few things that I wanted to talk about. Um, uh, you know, making these positive steps like you were saying, you know, I turned off the phone at some point. I listened to my kids. I made yeah. sure that we had healthy choices. I opened myself up to the grief experience. When grief would come, I let it. I let myself cry. I didn't fight the waves because when you're fighting it, it's so exhausting 
But if you just let it happen, it'll pass through you and you'll get through to the other side. Sometimes I would cry, you know, I did cry for an hour at one point. Another time I cried for 20 minutes, another time for 30 minutes. Um, that's okay because if I kept trying to fight it, I'd be wiped out all day from trying to fake it. Yeah, it's part of your rhythm. And yeah. when you mess with your rhythm, you're really messing with some really Teutonic kind of pla uh, planes there that you can't move. Right. That uh, you really need to just ride with it. Right, exactly. So here are a few um, ideas. Uh, well, one of the things I guess I want to talk about today, and forgive me if I'm not completely on my A game, but um, 10 years ago, a loving, wonderful family member told me, don't cry in front of your youngest daughter. You know, Ari at the time, the other one was internal. Um, she was almost three. Don't cry because it, in front of her, you need to be strong because otherwise that will change her permanently. And I know that that person was concerned about my child's childhood, that she wanted her to have a childhood. Right. And I was yeah. crying a lot. And I, at that moment, I hugged her and I said, I love you, but what you're asking me to do is really unhealthy. Mm -hmm. And something terrible has happened and I'm gonna cry when I need to cry and we're gonna have a good time when we need to have a good time. And I hoped, that's the only way I knew how to do it. Right. And I've done it for 10 years with my children. We have spoken honestly about loss. They know their dad's journey. They know. They know that he took his life. They know. It's not a surprise. We are honest it's about things. It's not a secret. It's, there's no secrets. So that we can manage it together. Mm -hmm. And um, so now, fast forward 10 and a half years, my dad has passed. And I guess in a way, I didn't really think of it as a social experiment, but it was. And then, you know, there was a moment where I just broke into tears and my 13-year-old was with me. Now Ari is 13 and she was there and I was like, I mean, this just hurts so much. And I said, Ri, <laughs> I can't believe it, but at 13, you're further on this journey than I am because I'm almost 50 and I'm used to having my father with me. Mm -hmm. And you know what it is to lose a father. And she just looked at me, she sat back, and she was like, you know, Mom, it's not that I'm not sad. I am sad, and I do miss Papa, but he was in pain. It was hard for him to be in his body. My dad had vertigo for five years straight, yes. and he never complained. Mm. He just only got sweeter as he got older. Unbelievable. And she said, he's not in pain anymore. He's not in his body. I know he's with us, and it'll be okay. I'm I'm kind of glad for him that he's not in pain. And it was like somebody cut a chain. In my mind, I was thinking, I haven't done enough. Oh, my gosh, where's my dad? And and it's like she broke this chain of negative, th negative th thoughts. thoughts. Yeah. My 13-year-old did that. And if I hadn't let her in, you know, to... My kids know when I'm sad. When you don't let them know when you're sad, it's like you're telling them their intuition is off. Yeah, and your honesty gives her permission to be honest, too. Mm -hmm. And again, the, the, her grief isn't as filtered as the adult grief. Mm -hmm. It's pretty out there, and they, they describe what, what they see quite yeah. clearly and, uh, and what they feel, too. If there's an adult around to let them do that, they will, they will go into their own grieving. Right. And find their own rhythm. And find their own rhythm. Exactly. So, so there, so uh, Sylvia, uh, what am I, not Sylvia, Sophia. Sylvia is my mom in law who's awesome and she's been visiting with us, by the way. And wow, it's been amazing. Anyway, Sophia, my youngest at 10, um, she crawled into my bed in the morning and she, it, it was like day, it was Thanksgiving Day. Mm. Oh, Thanksgiving Day. And I was crying and she gave me a hug. And um, she goes, Mama, look outside the window. It's a good day outside. And it was. The sun was shining through the autumn leaves. And I'm like, it is a good day. And she looked at me and she goes, we're going to have a good day. And I said, you're right, my love. And then when I kind of calmed down, I go, how are you with processing the loss of Papa? 
And she said, well, you know, Mom, I keep thinking that he's having a really great time with his family members that he hasn't seen in a long time. Now, my father, when he was nine, and he was eight, almost 84 when he died, his father was taken from the family by Nazi soldiers during the Warsaw Uprising in 1944. And you're right. My father was reuniting with his family members. Wow. And I thought, I couldn't begrudge him that. You know, he was having a beautiful time with his family that he hadn't seen. And I bet there... 70 years. Yes. Yeah. More. You know, in yeah. 70 plus years. Yeah. And that gave me the freedom on Thanksgiving Day to have a good day. And I invited friends over. We had made plans in advance. We had neighbors over, a lot of other people, family included. They had people flying in from other places. And we always stayed in Atlanta so that my, my dad couldn't travel. So we already had that in place. It was OK. Right. And I understood if people could come, I let them come. And if they couldn't come, I, had, I didn't take it personally because everybody has their own grief journey. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, Lord, whoever comes here, is that's who's supposed to be here right now. And they're welcome. And it's okay to stagger people coming to visit you. It doesn't have to all happen in the first few days. Right. So um, we had a beautiful Thanksgiving, and friends joined us, and we had a wonderful time. But if I hadn't have been honest with my daughter, with my 10-year-old, in my grief, I don't know that I would have ha I would have been fighting the grief all day. Right. You know, so you have been conflicted, right? Right, and then you're not authentically joyful. No, then you start to pretend, and that's to pretend is is, uh, is a lie. Know. You know, they, they they can see through that, so they they get the impression that it's not safe to be honest, right. and so you start teaching dishonesty instead of what you really want. Exactly. So um, that has that has been amazing. And how, how much time do we have left, Joey? Joey's uh, in the back. Yeah. We have three minutes. All right. So okay. <laughs> this may be a 20-minute podcast again. Yes. But um, because there's so much to share on this. So um, when my late husband passed, it is rough when a family has to go through a suicide. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a rough um, journey for my amazing mother-in-law, Sylvia, who I have tremendous respect for. This woman is a hero in her own right. What a woman. What an empowered woman. Mm -hmm. But you know what? We're both strong women. <laughs> and um, it, there, was, there was some, when iron sharpens iron, um, sparks fly. And there was some sparks, man, for a while. But you know what? She, I had, when my phone died on day one, and it did about halfway into the day, it just died. And I was like, I'm not turning it back on. The next day, she goes, I see a message from her, and she goes, I don't know if this is okay, but I'm booking a plane ticket, and I'm going to be at your house for Thanksgiving. <laughs> you got to love a mother-in-law with moxie. Yes. And she's just like, I'm coming, man. And she did. And it was amazing. And you know why it was amazing? Because we had done our grief work for 10 years. When we had a hard time not seeing eye to eye, we worked through it. Sometimes we needed to take a break, and then we come back together and work through it. We would set healthy boundaries. We learned each other. And now, Sylvia is my mom. She is not my mom-in-law. She is my mom, and I love her. And she walked into our family. She knows all my quirks, and I can be quirky. I don't know if you know that. I can be quirky. I've noticed. Yeah, I can be quirky. <laughs> and so she knows my quirks. She knows where the boundaries are. And what did we, it was like, it was like when you've hooked up a team. And I know this is a weird analogy, but I really like Laura Ingalls Wilder and Little House on the Prairie. And there was this whole thing in like um, Farmer Boy where the two, there were the oxen are learning how to pull together oh, and it was a whole big mess. And so um, when you're learning how to work together, sometimes you're yoked together. Yes. And one goes this way and one goes that way, and you don't get any work done. But when my mom-in-law came, Sylvia, she knew how to be yoked with me, and we plowed that territory of grief and planted hope for my children. Planted those seeds of hope, yeah. Yes, 
over and over and over again, and it was beautiful and rich and full. It was fruitful so soon, but sometimes life is um, going through loss. You feel like those, when it's hard, those family, those relationships fall away. It's strained, yes. But if you can go back, and it's hard. There's a whole lot of humble pie. I ate. Man, I ate a lot of humble pie. It was like, bring it on again. Let's just eat the pie. Serve some crow with the humble pie. A lot of crow. <laughs> but, um, but you know what? Now I'm living this beautiful moment with my grandmother, with the grandmother of my children, and I want her with us, and I want her to be in the holidays, and I want her, I want her in my family. Yeah, you gain strength from each other. Yeah. yeah. And it's not that I never wanted her. It's just it was hard for us to be around sometimes. And I'm not perfect. I mean, we both had challenges, and I brought a lot of challenges to the table. And um, We all do, though. Yeah. But you know what? We worked through it in honesty. We didn't forget it. We didn't sweep under the carpet. We worked through it. And because you have transparency and authenticity, then you can have authentic, close, powerful bonds. That's the stuff you want to go through in grief, man. And I was glad to have her in my corner. I was glad. So that's the beautiful stuff. So there's the honest grief, teaching compassion and transformation. You know, the compassion that my children had uh, for me and my father was transformative for me. And the compassion that my mom-in-law had for us is totally transforming our grief journey. But you got to plow, you got to work that rocky ground and it's worth it, man. It's worth it. You can do it. It's worth the effort. It really is. And that's how you have those beautiful, non-strained family holidays, is by working the rock, rocky ground during the year. Yes. Yeah. It's all preparation. It's all in the preparation. Yeah, it is. Okay, so the next, um, the next uh, session, and I wanted to add a little thing that I didn't say in um, Healthy Choices was sleep. Oh, man, is sleep important? So... You want to set a healthy rhythm for sleep. And the first few days, maybe I got like five hours of sleep, maybe two or, two or three nights, five hours of sleep. But I started taking some calm magnesium powder that you can find at your local health food grocer. Um, and I took, you know, uh, the different oils like cod liver oil. You can get it flavored. Um, hemp seed oil. You can get that also at um, your, I'm sorry, excuse me, uh, at your local health food grocer making good healthy choices gave me good sleep when i have good sleep everybody's happy mm -hmm. and that helps me to be on my a game for making healthy choices for the whole family so um and also the movement that was key that was key the movement so you want to make sure to incorporate those grief empowerment choices so that you can be on your a game when the unexpected happens absolutely Okay, well, that's all we have for now. Um, next, next time we're going to talk about empowering sacred spaces and how you can do the holidays um, for your family even though you're, going, you know, you're experiencing loss. Um, God bless. Thanks so much for joining us. And if you want to learn more about us, go to 180yourlife.com. 180yourgrief.org is our um, sister nonprofit for widows, and we would really appreciate your support. You can go on that website and uh, make a tax-deductible donation. We'd really appreciate that. That empowers our widows um, both in Atlanta and online as we continue to scale to other cities with our grief empowerment um, curriculum, our 180U, our video series that's available online with multiple courses. We have 15 courses at this point, and, um, and then our grief empowerment workshops that we post online and we have in person as well. Thanks so much. We can't do it without your support. God bless. We'll see you next time. Take care.